Hello, welcome to Anti-War, alternative channel, Anti-War. And Louisiana Beer Reviews is doing Island Southern Peach. Four and a half percent alcohol, company founded 2016, 164 calories, made with real peaches, real I think it's black tea, tastes like it, unsweetened, and beer, lager beer. The re their standard lager without the flavoring is 137 calories. So with the flavoring, it jumps nearly 30 calories, probably because of the peaches and the sugar and the tea, I would assume. Alcohol doesn't change. There you go. Pretty thick. Somewhat off white head, orange appearance. When people see bubbles, they're going to say the glass is dirty. It's dirty. No, it's not dirty. It's just old and it's probably got a lot of etching on the scratches on the glass. The glass probably 50, 60 years old. So the bubbles are going to stick to any any surface area that's not totally smooth. I keep my stuff clean. I wash mine. Glassware with very extremely hot, scalding water and soap by hand, not in a dishwasher. Pat Sajak is retiring for Wheel of Fortune after 41 years. It smells like peaches. Taste. Cheers. I found this when it showed up just out of the blue at Mathern's Market. Didn't know a thing about it. Took a chance, $17.99 for the variety pack. I did a little research, you know, four cans of three flavors each. They're claiming all natural. Look at their website. No GMO grains, all natural flavors, real cane sugar, the finest barley malt, no, no rice or corn filler. Tastes like real peaches, like they let it soak in. That let real peaches soak in it for days and days, maybe maybe weeks. Well, they probably just dumped crushed up peaches, fresh peaches in it, and then poured black tea. But it's bitter now. I saw one video review where the guy was saying, oh, I hate it. It's too bitter. It's too bitter. He just said that like four times. And I said, he's probably never... He's probably never had experience drinking. And I don't, I'm not going to say I like unsweetened tea. I'm not, I don't, it's too bitter, but he probably has no experience with that. And that black unsweetened tea was getting to him, you know, it's not the hops. The hop action here is low. Hop bitter is probably one out of five hop cones. It's probably three out of five black tea leaves. Huh. Sweetness three out of five from the peaches. They might add sugar to it, but it doesn't taste like they're adding sugar. It tastes like it's from the fruit. I could be fooled. Premium beer with all natural flavors. There's your legal disclosure. Premium beer. The premium part is not a legal term. That doesn't mean anything. It's a marketing term, but beer is a legal term. With natural flavors is a legal term. There's no coloring added. Brewed by Island Brands USA, Auburndale, Florida. And there's a brewery down there, Florida Brewery. Florida Brewery, I think it's called. Either it's owned by Island Brands or they have a contract with them and they're calling it Auburn. You know, they do this on, on, the, on the cans. They'll say, uh, you know, distilled by George Dickel in Indiana. Well, they don't own a distillery in Indiana. But they'll just register it at George, as George Dickel. There's a brewery in Indiana, I mean, a distillery in Indiana called Midwest Grain Products, MGP, they do a lot of contract distilling. They make a lot of rye whiskeys, for instance, a lot of gin. So the rye whiskey, they concoct, they make a, they make a special, of course, a special one for George Dickel. And they, they age it in the George Dickel barrels and through the charcoal, maple charcoal, sugar maple charcoal, and they send it back to Kentucky, I think, to bottle it. But the point, uh, Tennessee, sorry, Tennessee to bottle it, bottle it. 
the point is they'll use their name on it, you know, like it depends on the company though. Some will say distilled in Ireland for so and so instead of using their name on it as though they made it. It's obviously allowed to happen. Okay, now this thing is got that just like little cuts of the bitterness. So I don't if you're sensitive to bitterness. It's not the same type of bitterness as India Pale Ale. This is the black tea bitterness. Sensitive to that, then hmm. I am in a way, because my mother used to drink unsweetened tea. Uh, and I was like, I don't know how she could drink that stuff. I would have to add sugar to it. You know, it's just like too bitter, you know. But she would drink it, think it's great. And that's how she grew up drinking it, but it definitely did not appeal to me. I understand too much sugar is bad for you. I get that part. But to have none. Uh, Hector Lopez says, it's sad about Anchor Steam no longer being nationwide. National wide, nationwide. Hi, Ronald. Hello, Hector. Yeah. When I got that new news, see, when people were saying that yesterday evening on my uh, taste challenge for the two Scotch whiskeys, I thought they would just put me on at first. Like, oh, they're just... Because people like to play games and be stupid. But then I was like, uh-uh, they're not joking. So then I checked the news and I was like upset. I mean, I was that was the original craft beer company. My friend David said it was a beta. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I told him on the phone last night. I said it was Anchor Brewing in 1971. I mean, they had been around since 1896, but they were just a standard regional brewer. They were not a craft brewer. But in 1971, they decided they're going to Make an all malt beer, no corner rice. They're going to really take time with it, with high quality ingredients. And they're going to, they didn't use the term craft beer back then. They're going to make the Liberty Ale in 1975. They came out with Liberty Ale or Pale Ale. Then they came out with a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, our special ale in 1975. And they had an artist, the same artist, doing different tree drawings every year. They changed the recipe every year. They came at all, they even came out with Double Liberty, Double Liberty, which was a double IPA. It was awesome. I bought it here, here in Louisiana, but it faded quick. But I knew something was wrong with Anchor. They got bought out. That's not always a bad sign. But I think the people that bought them, the Japanese company was like, what did we buy? You know, we bought a company with bad sales in a city with exorbitant costs that's run down, that's dangerous, with a municipal government that doesn't care about crime or even if their businesses stay around, like literally no kind of sense government. And our, our, our footprint on the national scene has been dropping for years, fading, fading, fading. So the, the owner, that Maytag family probably said, let's sell it. You know, would you like to sell it? They were probably like, well, means a lot to us. Well, no, we really want it. And they, okay, if you twist our arm, we'll sell. And they're probably thinking like, good grief, let's get rid of it. This thing is still pits. It's going down, 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 just like all the other original craft beer companies. And then the Japanese people bought it and were like, what did we just buy? Got no sales, anchor steam sitting on the shelf. Nobody buys it. Merry Christmas, our special. Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Our special ale costs a fortune to make, barely make any money off of it. Can't afford to put out our old, put out all our old nice specialty beers like Old Foghorn. Barley wine. So, hey, well, I knew this was going to happen 10 years ago. 10 years ago, 2013, I was telling people on Facebook and the internet, all the other stuff. I was like, man, this thing's going to crash. Craft beer is going to crash. Oh, you're being negative because you like Bud, Budweiser and stuff like that. I was like, I'm not being negative, and it's nothing to do with that. Okay? You got it all wrong. I said, every day you turn around, there's a new craft beer on the market from some new pop-up company that nobody ever heard of. <laughs> Excuse me. Half the time, the beer is not even any good or barely good. Let's test this out. Let's give this a score, please. Medium. Body mostly dry finish. 
this is one of the new ones that is good. It's not really that new, but new for us. It's got a savory flavor. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. To me, that bitterness kind of counterpoints the peach peach sweetness, peach juice. Oh, it's dynamite, savory peaches. It's great. One of the best. They don't claim to be a craft brewer, okay? They're claiming we're in, we're in between craft beer and macro. Probably in their dreams they are. Like, they're thinking we're going to be a big regional beer. I don't think they're big. Uh, but uh, nowhere nowhere on the can do they claim to be an independent craft brewer. So they probably didn't join the Brewers Association. They're probably like, nah, we don't want to have nothing to do with those guys. They just want your money. And I'm saying that might be their thing. And they want your money and... Uh, they just change their stand arbitrary standards all the time. Like calling Yingling a craft brewery, which everybody knows it isn't. But their standards were arbitrary all along. You can only make this much beer a year and be a craft brewer. Well, what does the volume have to do with it? I thought it was something to do with the quality and the ingredients. No, no, no. You know, they don't know. Okay. Uh, a all the way. A all the way this is without a doubt a 94 out of 100 9.4 out of 10. i'm not going to sit there and pretend like i'm going to run out and buy it all the time i buy stuff like milwaukee's best as my everyday beer you, you know what i'm saying 17.99 divided by 12. Dollar fifty a beer. <laughs> Eight ninety-nine and a half. So nine dollars a six six pack. Nine yeah, it's it's worth it. It's worth it. I don't know why I had to calculate that. Half of eighteen is nine, right? Ding ding ding. Okay, uh Better than a lot of other stuff I can get for eight ninety nine dollars a six pack, I'll tell you. Oh man, that is dynamite. Now, if my friend David tries it, he might think it's not that good. What's well, his opinion? But I think it's awesome. All right. Uh, So anyway, I said 10 years ago that this was going to crash and people were saying, you're being negative, you're being negative. It wasn't being negative. I just thought, how can this make it? Every day that turns around. I think that video is too dark. Every day that comes by, you got a new craft brewing, brewing company coming along. Not to mention they've got another one going out of business the next day. Uh, And then you had companies that had made really good. I mean, to me, to me, this is me speaking. Companies like Harpoon and, and Magic. Some people complained about Magic Hat. I wasn't one of those people. Harpoon, Magic Hat, Red Hook, Widmer Brothers, Full Sail, Wasatch, Squatters, Green Flash. Boulder Brewing, Victory, Shipyard, Southern Tier, Great Lakes. They were they were on the market here in Louisiana, and they were like, "Oh man, every beer, all my gang, every beer they made was so good." We used to get a lot of Unibrew. This is 10 years ago, 2013. It's like, oh, man, you just wanted to try the next one. You couldn't wait to try the next one. It was all so, so exciting. And then all these new companies started coming. And they used to get the shoots a little bit, a little bit, like red the shoots Red Chair and uh, Jubilee, a couple of us. Uh, Racer 5, we used to get that one. But then all these new companies started coming as they flood the market. And I noticed that some of their stuff wasn't quite as good, like you would say. Mm. 
it seemed sloppy, like they were putting it together sloppy. Like the quality control was just out the window. And then uh, then you start seeing these companies fading. All the ones I named just slowly left the market. I went looking for uh, Sweetwater this past week. Couldn't find a single can or bottle. Could not get over it. Went to eight different stores now. Yes, eight different stores. Because we wanted to do a review of Sweetwater. So then today I said, well, okay, I'll find Terrapin. That's easy to find. Uh -huh. Went to Mathern's, not a single Terrapin on the shelf. That white chocolate stout and all of that moohoo and all was gone. I was like, what in the world? I said, well, I'll just get it at Walmart, you know. Went to Walmart this morning. That Terrapin variety pack was gone. The Terrapin, whatever that IPA is called, you know, the one I'm talking about, that 9% or whatever it is, gone. The moohoo gone. Everything gone. Not a single Georgia beer in that whole store, unless it was one of those Miller beers made in Albany, Georgia. You know what I mean? Miller beer. So I thought, wow, this is not good at all. But it just it just goes along with the point I make. And then you hear about all these ones going out of business or they get bought out or they say, oh, well, we're only going to sell in California now. And we're only going to sell the Christmas sale on a draft tap and limited quantities. And the company in Louisiana was like, well, we're only going to sell our beer out of the ta uh, tasting room now. No more bottles or cans in the stores. I'm like, there's no way. It's, that is not a sign of success. And I said that 10 years ago, too many beer companies chasing too few people. And the people in the craft beer movement, if one should call it a movement, were saying, I'm talking about the fans more than the producers. They were saying, they got this dream, like one day, everybody, no one's going to drink Bud Light. No, yeah, maybe so now, but it wasn't for the reason they were dreaming. They were thinking one day all the Bud Light and Bush Light drinkers and Miller High Life drinkers are going to be drinking IPAs and peanut butter stouts, but it didn't happen. Some did. And then the big macro companies start adopting some of the craft beer stuff in a sense, you know, and it's too very limited, like making all the now the but like tahin. I'd like to try it. Uh and all those chiladas, and you had butter like wheat beer, remember that, years ago, didn't make it. Um, so they kind of adopted some of that, you know, yingling Hershey chocolate beer and all. So that kind of cut into it also, because the craft beers got so exorbitantly expensive, you know, it was like $4.99 for a pint can. It's $5. That's 20 That's $19.96 a four pack, $19.96 a four pack. And half the time, it's not even good. A C or a B, and you're paying A plus prices. Uh -uh. Can't work. It's not going to make it. And you know how people are, are in that movement. They're going to try one thing. Next week, they're on to something else. It's all fad and stuff. Everything that's big this week is forgotten the next week. <clears throat> and I'm a member of beer groups on Facebook, and I see what people do. Oh, you got to get it. Oh, yeah. And then the next, a year later, he's like, oh, remember that awesome beer? Oh, and my palate has developed. I used to think it was awesome. In other words, they've moved on to some other new bubblegum thing or whatever, you know. So I'm like, uh -huh, okay. Anyway, so it was a sad story, Hector, about Anchor, Harpoon, Shipyard. Sea Dog, that was a shipyard, uh, brew pubs. We used to get a lot of Sea Dog beers. They weren't anything great, but they weren't expensive either. But it's slowly all died away. All died away. Don't even mention the European imports that used to be so good. They're basically impossible to find now. They don't even bother sending them out here. Ain't nobody going to buy them. He's going to sit on the shelf. Except for a few stores like Dormax, you have some people, some real big time beer people go in there and buy it. Otherwise, it was to collect us. All right. Well, anyway, Island, Southern Peach, a winner. Thanks, everybody.